Herks will be under center. He will hand it to Swift, who is nearly beheaded by Osa Odigizua. Hey, what's up, Cowboys Nation? Welcome into this week's episode of First and Ten, presented by J.C. Penny. We've got another good one for you, like always. We've got Cowboys defensive lineman Osa Odigizua. Osa, what's up, man? I'm good. I'm just chilling. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. You're just Thank telling you. me that you got to spend time with your family. How was that? It was great. great. Love, love spending time with the fam. Gotta love it. It's only right, right? Yeah, it's just good for the soul. <laughs> just, yeah. just, you know what I mean? Just get recharged mentally. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, I got to start with this. Um, obviously, you know, you guys had some struggles against the Bills, but that bounce back game was strong against Miami, e even despite, you know, the loss. What was the difference for you all? I, I feel like definitely we had a better performance, but I, I can't call it a bounce back yeah. if we didn't come out on top. You know what I mean? Gotta love that mentality. Um, just talk about, you know, you now you're, you're in, in year three. Um, you came out and you were hit your rookie season. Your second year, um, obviously you solidified yourself as a force in the middle of that defensive line. Now you've carried that over into year three. Uh, how have you, I guess, maintained that dominance so far? Um, just constantly being obsessed with improvement, trying to, trying to just find different ways to grow. Yeah, what are some ways that you've kind of leaned on as far as working on your improvement? Um, just taking in information, yeah. making use of it, you know, uh, finding opportunities when I have the opportunity to make the play and then just being able to make those. Well, Birdie told me that you implemented Pilates into your workout regimen. How has that kind of helped you? It definitely, it's definitely helped out a little bit. I feel like just in terms of just balance and stability and just core strength. Did you ever imagine doing Pilates and kind of working that into football? Nah, <laughs> nah, I didn't. But like, I just said, like, heard about it from a few vets and just mm -hmm. like friends that I know around the league. So I figured I'd just try and implement it into my regimen. You were three times state champ in wrestling. But I heard that you said that in your um, pre draft process that every lineman should work on wrestling um, in their off season. How has that kind of helped you as now you've uh, been three years into the NFL? Um, I feel like it just helps you with your balance, being able to feel pressures and just like where people are leaning. Yeah, and that's played a part in your development through now the time that you stood with the Cowboys. Definitely, and then I mean like your pad level too, like you gotta be low in wrestling, you gotta be used to being down in a low stance, so. Snap back to Jones in an empty set. They, oh he got hit as he threw, down the right side incomplete. Couldn't get enough into the follow through because he just got cream. Yeah. Do you dibble and dabble into modeling? Is that right? A little bit. A yeah. little bit. A little bit. Yeah, What's that? Kind of had like <laughs> I made like my runway debut. Okay. Uh, this off season did a little swimwear mm. in Dallas and in Miami. What's that been like? It was cool. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. It was. It was just. It was a lot more chill than I thought it would yeah. be. Like it was just, it was just fun, pretty, pretty chill, and it was a good time. CD also told me that he does modeling too last week. So do you guys ever like uh, kind of throw off some tips? Does he ever give you advice? Do you give him advice? Ever, any moments like that? I mean, I, I feel like he probably got more experience <laughs> modeling than me, and I'm pretty sure he went to Paris. So yeah. I'm like he, he doing it big. Like I need to get tips from him. <laughs> Uh, you also love anime. Um, yeah. I've never watched anime before, um, but for someone like me, if you're kind of explaining, why does that interest you? Um, I feel like there's, it's just really good storytelling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, as a kid, it's just really cool fights. Yeah. But then, like, as I get older, I feel like I can appreciate more, like, the storytelling, the world building, uh, character development, and just relate to the characters. What character do you relate to the most? I feel like, well, or, like, there's takeaways that yeah. I could take away. Like, when I watch Naruto, like, you know, the perseverance that he had and mm. just, like, the work ethic to achieve his goals and his dream. It took yeah. 700 episodes for him to get there, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? But like watching that journey over those years, like you can just appreciate that, especially as an athlete, yeah. you know what I mean? Going through the ups and downs throughout the journey that's taken me pretty much my whole life to get here, like, and you know, just still going, so. And then uh, like Dragon Ball Z. Okay. One of the things that like, people will say gets repetitive, but like, if you really think about it, you can again, appreciate it as an athlete because like, there is always another level that you can reach and that's kind of the main takeaway from that show. They're constantly working to improve 
and make it to the next level. Yeah. I want to touch on both of those themes. The first, perseverance. Has there been a moment in your life that you've had to persevere? Um, I would say so, yeah. Like, there's a lot of times where, like, you know what I mean? When you're in college and high school, you don't know if you're going to get that offer or you're yeah. going to get that call on draft day. And those doubts kind of, like, you know, um, they just get to you sometimes, yeah. you know, just um, things that you struggle with, just not knowing whether or not the, the, the uncertainty of it all, like, you know, you never know when you're going to get hurt or like whether you're just good enough to make it to that next level. Yeah. You don't know until you get that call or until you get that offer. So, you know, just grinding until those things come to fruition and just stay in the course despite your doubts. It's come to fruition, obviously, for you. Right? Yeah. That was Cowboys, three-year guy. Uh, but the other thing that I kind of want to touch on as well, you mentioned a different level that you can tap into. What's that different level that we could see from Oso Digizua in the 2023 season? I would say just always more production that could be had. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, that's, that's probably it for me. Yeah. And now in 2022, uh, the Cowboys made the trade for Jonathan Hankins. Um, and now this is year two for you guys. What's been the difference for you all and played, the, played a huge role into y'all's improvement playing alongside of each other? For Hank coming in mid season, mm -hmm. that's definitely a struggle. You gotta just yeah. delete a whole playbook from your mind and then like relearn a, a new playbook mm -hmm. like that and then be ready to play, do your job, not make mental errors or miss assignments or mistakes. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was definitely something that he had to overcome and he did a great job of that last season. So I think this year being in that scheme again and just having a little bit more confidence in the plays and, and the scheme definitely helped him out for sure. That's something that he was kind of very vocal about too, um, especially on Cowboys Hour. Uh, was there a moment that even you, a younger guy than him, um, that kind of just had to help him out with the playbook at all? I mean, I was lucky, yes, because like I was lucky enough to like be here right when DQ got here. So like a lot of the guys who were here already with the Cowboys were learning the scheme for the first time because that was when DQ got here. So I was learning it for the first time as they were too. So I wasn't really behind. Mm -hmm. So definitely I always tell guys that are just now getting here. I'm like, if you have any questions, ask me. Like I know the plays, like I can, I can help you out. What's something that you've learned from Jonathan Hankins? Hmm. <laughs> and it's not to say nothing. Like I had to think like, I feel like the way he plays the run and, and just and just knowing the blocks mm -hmm. definitely helped me out a little bit. Um, and I was just asking him like for advice, is like body care and stuff like that. Now we get the fun part, yay. Uh, it's called the final drive. Just gonna spit fire some questions for you. You can go ahead and answer them as quick as possible. All right, your favorite anime character? Ichigo. Why? Just dope, <laughs> just, just dope. really cool. All right. Really cool show. Okay, favorite holiday tradition? Favorite holiday tradition, Thanksgiving dinner. Mm, why? The food is always immaculate. Right. Having my people with me is great <laughs> vibes, great food. You can't beat it. Can't beat it. Uh, all right, your New Year's resolution. Hmm. I don't really do those, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Huh. Like, if, you, if you had to choose one, what would it be? Something that you want to improve on in 2024? Probably gonna be football related. Okay. I haven't thought about it yet, <laughs> to be honest. All right, um, most embarrassing. People don't be keeping those anyways. I'm not gonna I mean, lie. People say this year is the year. And they don't. Every you know year. what? I'm guilty. I'm, I'm not guilty. One of those. I'm yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Because I've been saying I was gonna work out every day. I haven't done that. So it's that's all right. A, I like. <laughs> that's. <laughs> Every day is insane. It's, it's insane, right? But that's something that I told myself I was going to do. Shoot high, miss high. Shoot high, right? Miss high. Hey, you got to love it. Uh, most embarrassing pickup line you've used on a girl. <laughs> most embarrassing pickup line I've used on a girl. Hmm. I just be chatting sometimes. I can't lie. Like, uh, I can't say that there was like a specific one. But like I've probably said something dumb at some point and just be throwing it out there. Just I like to make them laugh. Like yeah. if I say something stupid and we're both laughing, we're having a good time. All right. Uh, favorite thing about being a Dallas Cowboy? Winning. Like I feel like you know this is a great football team, um, and just being in the position to where we can win a lot of games, and and I feel like I have the confidence going into every game that we could win. Um, that's probably my favorite thing. Favorite restaurant in Dallas? 
Mm, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, <laughs> Albernay Steakhouse is probably the best steak that I've had. Um, but the steakhouses are probably the best. Is that like your favorite meal, steak? No, nah, it's not my favorite, but I would say like out of like the restaurants that I've been to, like I, I feel like I've been to like more steakhouses than anything else, just because okay. we go like every Thursday for D-line dinner or something like yeah. that. So the steakhouses are top Macula tier. Yeah. Top tier. <laughs> All right, if someone wrote a book about you, what would it be called? <laughs> what would it be called? Yep, the title. Tough one, I know. That is a tough one. Tough one. <laughs> I think we'll just have to go self-titled, like the life of Oso Digizua. All right. You could have came up with something better than that. Probably Osa goes hard if, if I like that. Else. Like, I like that one. All right, Osa goes hard. We're going to see you go hard. Again, yeah. Detroit Lions on Saturday, right? You feel me? You feel me. All right, well, that's a wrap for this week's episode of First in 10, presented by JCPenney. We'll see you all next week.